Okay, so here we are on the speed scope of George and we're getting right into it here. Okay, just starting off with the nose, starting off with some proportions. Okay, and really getting a younger version of him in and then as we go throughout the course or throughout the sculpt, we'll start sculpting in the older details and really start showing you the wear of gravity. But for now, just getting in the basic muscles and face structure, right? Just the things that need, we need to get in and... Okay, here we go again. Okay, getting in the temporalis, right? Just getting in the basic uh, proportions and the basic landmarks. Okay, also keeping myself organized here. Okay, and here I'm creating an ear. Okay, just duplicating that and bumping that out with the Z modeler. Okay, and I, usually what I like to do is keep the ear separate from the rest of the body. Okay, um, just so we can work on the head separately and the ears separately because it can be a little bit of a hassle to move around. And if you need to change the proportions or anything, that can be a little bit of a hassle as well, so I keep it separated. So yeah, just making sure it's in line with your cheekbone, okay, your zygomatic arch. Here, getting in the eyes while we're at it. Uh, it's a pretty, a pretty good idea to get these in early, just so you don't mess them up later on, okay? It's a little bit of a hassle to deal with putting in eyes uh, once you're like halfway through the sculpt. So here, just getting them in by right, getting the proportions of the eyeballs and... Same thing with the iris and the pupil here, okay, the iris is about half the the diameter of your eyeball, okay, and then the pupil is there. Okay, right now he looks a little bit shocked because our eyelids are a little bit wonky or uh, lifted all the way up. So it just reads as shocked, but if I, if I move that down immediately you can see that just looks normal now all of a sudden, okay, just like that. Can okay, that's just a difference um, with your eyelids there, if you lift them up, right, it reads as shocked and if you bring them down, uh, you know, just normal. So here, again, just getting in some proportions. You can see me just showing those numbers there. Okay, having a look at some of these distances here. Okay, measuring those. I'm just keeping those in mind while I'm sculpting. Um, I'm not really going for full likeness on this sculpt, but I do want, you know, to kind of get my proportions in there and have it look like the guy at least, right? Just a little bit. But not 100%. That's not the goal of the sculpt. It's just to sculpt him and then just, you know, uh, for fun, right? Not for a likeness. Okay, again, getting in some of these muscles, and you won't really see this on an old person unless they're super ripped. But even then, the you know the skin does sag down a little bit, so it kind of hides all of that. Okay, but here, kind of aging him, right? We did the young version of him. Okay, but we don't want to spend too much time on the young version because we are sculpting an older person. So now we're putting in some of these areas of fat here. Okay, just around the face and just getting in these secondary forms. We're mainly dealing with primary forms before this, and okay, looking a little bit sad, but we'll um, have him just kind of neutral. Uh, in a little bit. Okay, again, getting in some of these landmarks and secondary landmarks. Okay, getting in the nose there and... Okay, yeah, the forehead and, you know, again, just getting in some of these secondary forms here and just trying to use my anatomy knowledge. So here I put the jowling fat in and the mental fat. The jowling fat's a little too far back, so I'll move it forward a little bit later on. Here as well, some fat, and that doesn't really belong there. I mean, it does belong there if you have it, but he doesn't really have it, so. Here, all I'm doing is just isolating these areas just so I can work on them without being just sort of distracted by the rest of the face. Okay, and here as well, just getting in some of these areas, just defining them, and because he's a little bit older, we do have an eye, an eyelid, and then an eye fold in front of that. So something you'll see me detail later on just to be mindful of, and here getting in the ears. Okay, um, pretty simple, there's a Y within a G or a nine, if you wanna call it that. So a nine, and then the outer shape is the nine, and then the Y, which you can clearly see is in that. Just a shortcut for building up ears. Okay, here that line kind of marks the area of where your fat stops, or, or not fat stops, but it kind of, um, one area stops and another area starts. So that, that area kind of is where, what I mark there. Okay, moving on to the neck here, right, getting in just a little bit of fat there and the sagging. Okay, you can see me moving back and forth between the previous model and this one, and you can see the skin is starting to sag just a little bit more, okay, which is obviously what we want. He is a little bit older. So you're getting in the eyelid, and then in front of that, we're going to put an eye fold, okay, because that fold in front of his eye is not his eyelid. It's an eye fold. Behind that is his eyelid. Okay, some people have that, uh, you know, as they get older, right, Norman Reedus isn't that old, but you can see it forming on him. Okay, same thing here with the orbital fat, okay, which is the fat around your eye. He's got a little bit of it, right, not too much, um, not enough to sort of, um, if you were caricaturing him, you wouldn't really exaggerate this piece of him. Okay, but that's what caricaturing does, they just exaggerate the, 
they just exaggerate the parts that kind of um, make you who you are, right? So if you've got like a longer nose or a shorter forehead or a large forehead, right? These are characteristics that make you look like who you are, right? They're kind of unique to you uh, and a combination of other things, obviously, but some things just stand out more than others, which is what character artists do, okay? They take, right? They take features that are very unique to you and exaggerate them, okay? So yeah, just getting into some of their forehead uh, wrinkles, right? And just helping me out with the proportions there. And here, just showing you that from the mouth to the zygomatic bone, which is your cheekbone, right? That's kind of the limit of that muscle. Here again, getting in some jowl fat. Okay, and... So right now, it looks kind of flat, the fat. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll thicken it up a little bit later on. But for now, just laying it in. We don't want to get too much into details because we're not really at the details phase. Um, well, kind of, right? We're, we're pretty much at the details phase, phase now. Okay, so again, adding more to the fat and right, his, his malar fat, which is kind of what we're dealing with there, is quite a bit, right, compared to the rest of it. So if we were to caricature him, that would be uh, exaggerated quite a bit. So now that we know that, we can make sure to actually exaggerate that. Well, not exaggerate that, but pay careful attention to that. And again, you can see me going back and forth between my previous models, right, just to see that. And you can see the, sa the fat really sagging down, okay, and his face and skin. Right, that really helps with the believability of age. And he is older, so we're fine. If you're doing this with a younger person, definitely not a good idea. Okay, here, just making sure to establish the eyelid and then the eye fold in front of that. And at this point, I do have symmetry off. I think I had symmetry off, like, maybe two minutes ago, <laughs> right? Okay, just having a look at some of these proportions, right? Bottom of the nose is the bottom of the ear, and I've now merged the ear to the face because I'm kind of kind of happy with where that is. And the top of your eyebrows is also kind of the top of your ear. But he is older, so he'll have a bigger nose and a bigger ear, or bigger ears. So this proportion, these proportions are kind of out of whack. Okay, and as you can see, making extensive use of other references, because the current reference that I have is only, I only have one shot of him, right? Just that side view or um, three quarters of you. I don't really have anything else, so I'm making extensive use of other references. Okay, and those will help, kind of help me fill in the blanks here. It's very hard to do a likeness if you don't have a profile picture. Okay, using Jeremy here for uh, some of this um, jowling. Okay, he's not as old as our um, original model, but he is aging quite a bit there. That'll kind of help us out as well, so. Again, using other characters, but um, making sure to, you know, ground it with what our character actually looks like, right, so don't get carried away. Here, that jowling fat, like I said, I'm moving it forward here. Okay, jowling is just there on the side of your chin. Um, that there really ages the person. Okay, so if you put that in, the person will look like 10 years older. So now moving on to the hair, because we've blocked everything out and started to detail it, but we haven't blocked in the hair. So I'm just going to go to um, the mask, uh, I forgot what it's called, but I'll leave a link. Okay, so we're just using that. So if you just hold on control, click and drag, and if you bump up the intensity, that will control the thickness of this brush. And it's pretty easy to use and just to get, you know, um, geometry in really quickly. So yeah, I'm switching off back face masking, which is under brush and auto masking. Okay, brush, auto masking, and back face masking, which is really helpful for when you don't want to affect the back of geometry. So yeah, as you can see, just blocking in the moustache, okay, and blocking in the different types of hair. So first we're going to deal with the moustache, right, just getting that in really quickly there. And next year it's with the soul patch, okay, and naming them as well. That's the wrong name there, I think, but I'll correct it later on. Right, just getting in the very basic shapes, okay, and we'll deal with the detailing of the hair in a second, but for now just getting them in and then making sure we're kind of happy with the proportions and what it looks like and where they are, and then we'll start to detail it as we move along. Okay, just like with anything, you want to start off simple and then start to get a little bit more complex as you move. Okay, but we do have symmetry on on this one because, uh, you know, just for hair, it's a lot easier to work with symmetry. And then as you go, you can just, um, you know, start switching it off. And right now you can clearly see there are different pieces of hair, but as we go and detail it, you'll, you'll notice that they kind of blend together and it almost looks like one piece, even though we're keeping it separate. Okay, here again, just masking off this area. Right, having that push out. 
and then just detailing it again or blocking it out. Okay, just inflating that as well over there because it was getting kind of thin and you definitely don't want to have this thin geometry, especially if you're uh, 3D printing this. Okay, and then there we have those sort of side tufts of hair. Quite iconic for this guy, um, right? Kind of really adds to his profile. <laughs> or his silhouette rather, not his profile. Um, but yeah, pretty helpful there. And that's something we'll kind of uh, get into as we start to detail this. So now getting into the hair and I, I you know I tried a few methods here right just for how I wanted to approach this hair because obviously there's tons of ways to sculpt hair I'm not going for realistic blender type hair right where we use um, right the program to generate hair I'm actually sculpting this by hand so yeah you know I just experimented a, a little bit and there I used sort of my um, alphas but I didn't really like it so I restarted with the soul patch and you'll see the process from the beginning okay just how I achieved the mustache because I wasn't really happy with the moustache, so I'm just kind of restarting with the soul patch here. And then as we go along, you'll see the process I'm using. I'm basically just using the clay build up, going from a bigger clay build up to a smaller clay build up. And then really keeping with the gesture of the hair as well. Because as you can see, the moustache doesn't have too much um, in terms of character. But the soul patch here, you know, as you can see, as I'm going with the details here with the clay build up. Okay, I did skip the moustache, but you can kind of tell what I'm doing with the soul patch here. This is looking a lot better and a little bit more... You know, it adds a little bit more character compared to the moustache, right? The moustache looks kind of drab, right, compared to this piece. Right, adding in some curls, right, for the stray hairs, and... Right, really adding some character to that. And then here, again, going to the moustache and doing that same technique. Okay, your hair is actually thicker at the root and thinner as you get to the tip. But because we're doing bunches of hair here, what I'm doing is I kind of start off thin, and then it gets thicker towards the middle, and then a little bit thinner as we go out towards the end so it's kind of a counterintuitive uh, approach there okay but the moustache looking a little bit better than what we had and that's just the process right get the, a bigger clay build up just to build up the general sort of uh, shape okay get a medium brush just to get in the gesture and then a smaller brush just to kind of get in uh, more of the details so yeah i do have symmetry on okay just to make it a little bit easier so i don't have to do this twice and then later down the road i will switch off symmetry for the beard only for this part though, the mutton chops. The other pieces I didn't have symmetry on. Okay, like this part for example, right, symmetry's off. Again, just experimenting, but like I said, I pretty much exclusively use the clay build up here. There's no need for anything else. Okay, just detailing some of these curls here and really trying to capture the essence of what I'm seeing there. And you can see on the bottom left reference, I'm just using just sort of these big patches of hair just to see where everything is. What I do for hair is I just kind of divide it up and then deal with it like one piece at a time. Right, as you can see here. And then even on these pieces, I kind of divide them up into three, into like three separate areas. And then I just deal with them in that way. Because if you look at the moustache, you've got the left side, the middle side, and the right side. And each side is kind of different, right? The left side is pulling towards the left, obviously. The middle is kind of going towards the outsides. And then the right is pulling towards the right. But each area has sort of a distinct pattern almost. Not too different, obviously. You don't want to create completely different areas. So the eyebrows here, you know, I take a few approaches. But at the end, I still use the same technique, right, with the clay buildup. And here I got a little bit tired of dealing with hair, so I went straight to the details of the face here. But you kind of get the whole um, technique and style that I'm going for there. And the style was kind of a sort of sculpted look, right, as opposed to computer generated. And that's the, the theme I was going for here. So you're just using the damn standard and a little bit of the standard brush just to bump things up and push things in, right, to really get in those um, sort of wrinkles, right, and... Uh, you'll notice around the eye, okay, the orbit, um, the skin is very sort of um, fragile, okay, you, you can even see that it looks thinner and more fragile, and then as you get to like the nose, for example, it looks thicker, and just a little bit more rough, okay, so you really want to try and get these ideas across as you're sculpting, right, ha make something look more soft or hard or rugged, right, so these are some of the things we're dealing with here, and here what I'm doing is changing my lighting, just to have a look at it from different angles, 
This is actually pretty important, I don't really do it too often throughout my sculpt, I definitely should have done that more, but this will just help you kind of catch areas that are maybe too deep and you don't really see it with this material and this lighting, and that will really help you out as well as you're going throughout the sculpt. Okay, and because we have symmetry off, we have to do the same thing on the other side, okay, and um, obviously our faces aren't symmetrical, okay, so he will have, you know, roughly the same thing happening on this side, but, you know, like for example around the eyes there, you can see the number of creases, not really the same as the other side, okay. So, you know, slightly different, but, and that is kind of how faces work, like I said, it is asymmetrical, so you definitely want to switch off symmetry relatively early. If you're a beginner, keep it on, obviously. But at this point, you, you can't have it on because, uh, you know, each side is different. So definitely leave it off. Okay, but here, um, there, I didn't even notice that line. I only noticed it later. So now, yeah, and then I'm just smoothing that out. It's one of the uh, bugs in ZBrush. Okay, so yeah, again, going in with the damn standard and standard brush and just getting in some of these areas. And what I did with the uh, reference as well was I just uh, overexposed it just so I can see a little bit clearer on some of the other areas just for details. Okay, so yeah, just posing the eyes and we will also sculpt the eyes because right now they're just painted in, right? But we will sculpt them. And because we move the eyes, your eyelids have to move as well because your eyelids move in conjunction to your eyes moving. And speaking of sculpting the eyes, here we are. Um, all I'm doing is using the trim hole which is a special brush. If you press the comma key, go to brushes, go to trim, there's a trim hole brush and you can use that and that will trim holes into your uh, into your mesh, which is actually very convenient. So that's what I'm doing here and then using my morph target just to push it back out again. If you don't know how morph brushes work or why you should use them, you can check out my, one of my videos. I have a, uh, a pretty cool video on why you should use morphs, uh, morph targets and layers. Okay, pretty helpful. So you can check that out. Okay, so yeah, I kind of did the same thing, right? Just created a hole in the middle and I'm just morphing this piece out. Right, so I do have a full tutorial of this, a paid version. <laughs> and over there I explain everything, um, you know, just it's a little bit more in depth as you can imagine. Right, but this is just a uh, free version on YouTube. Okay, and again, using references, okay, the sum of the eye, getting in that lacrimal caruncle. Okay, that's that gooey piece in the center of your eye. And after that, I'm going to put in the Plica Semilunaris. That's just that uh, sort of second eyelid that you have almost. There it is there, right? That piece. Okay, that just adds a little bit of realism there and something to fill in that gap there that the eye uh, has there over there. Okay, so if you don't really fill it in, it's going to look weird. You have to kind of put something there. Okay, so all people's lips, okay, they're inverted, not everted. Everted are like those supermodel lips, right? That really push out and they're plump and uh, like full. Okay. Older people, right? Whether it's man or woman, they always have these inverted lips, right? Pulling in, right? As you can see with all my references here, right? You're seeing the same thing, just these lips because you don't have as much fat um, as when you were young. Okay. Even if you were skinny, if you're young, you, you're still going to have fat to kind of pull out these lips or, you know, keep your face in. Uh, intact right it doesn't really sag down but as you get older right gravity age that all takes its toll so that there just makes things way more believable okay here just adding a little bit of a body to him because i do want a little bit of a torso because he is wearing clothing so that's something i want to keep in there okay just deleting the rest of his body because we don't need that we don't need about this much and what i'm doing here is just merging these pieces Right, just so that's all together. And here I'm just moving the head. Which is, this is probably like the worst way to move a head. I should have Z remeshed this first. Right, and then went ahead, but I didn't do that. Because it would have been way easier to Z remesh it. Do it at a lower topology or a lower subdivision and then move it. But I did this the hard way, so yeah. This is definitely more work. Okay, but there we do kind of get the result that we want and um, yeah, there is now stuff to fix the mistake that I made. 
So it's using Smooth Stronger, which is another alternate brush. You just press the combo key, go to brushes and find Smooth Stronger, which is really helpful for when you have high topology items that need to be smoothed out, but they're um, unbelievably uh, hard to do so. So you use the Smooth Stronger. Okay, so here we're making the flat cap and I do have a video on my channel as well, how to make the flat cap if you're interested all in real time and it's for beginners. So you, if you're um, unsure about what I'm doing here or what I'm using, like the dynamics and the creasing and all that stuff, uh, you can check out the video on my channel as well. Okay, but again, just like with anything, getting in the basic shape and the basic uh, sort of volume, okay. So there I wasn't sure on what I, how I wanted to deal with that. So here I just said, okay, I'll just push that in. I'll pull that out. Okay, so we're kind of getting the shape like that. And then we still have that sort of visor piece, okay, which I'm going to make here. I just inserted a cube and just deleted the sides, added some edges. Okay, went to dynamic, added some thickness, added some segments, and now I'm just shaping that with the move brush. Okay, so here I will use the deformer, okay, with the bend arc and just use that as well. So I'm just having a look at where it sits on his face and it's just kind of, you know, in front of his nose, right? Maybe one nose width in front of his face and just above his eyebrows. So you're switching off back face masking and using the standard brush. And this here will just help me create these uh, sort of folds, right, that you see on this, just to make it a little bit more believable, so it doesn't look too plastic, okay. And here, just getting in some of the details as well. And the flat cap isn't part of the original reference, I just thought it would look pretty good on him. Okay, so yeah, just hiding some of these areas as well, because uh, we don't need that, so I'm just deleting it, and then I'm moving this area forward, going to BSC for the clip curve, Clipping that, deleting it, and then mirror and welding it. Okay, just so it fits over his head, while right? it's not fitting into his head. Get a little bit of a comfortable fit there. Okay, here I'm starting with the clothing, so I'm just going to duplicate his torso, mask off this area, then press Control Shift E. Okay, that'll give me a nice clean cut across, and I'll Z remesh this. Okay, and then I'll use dynamics as well. Okay, so we zero mesh that pretty clean topology there. And here I'm just inserting these edges. Okay, rounding it out. And doing the same thing on the bottom, right, with the Z modeler. In case you're wondering what I'm using there, the Z modeler. Just to insert edges. Okay, here um, I'm just going to kind of move that because it was kind of clipping on the edge there. And here pressing D for dynamic. And dynamics are under your geometry dynamics. And that'll give you this thickness. Okay, and also this dynamic subdivision here, which is pretty useful. So this here isn't real geometry, it's just dynamic. Okay, so you're creating the clothes on the torso. And that's as far as I want it, so I'm going to clip these edges here. Control shift e Right, so you remesh that a few times. And the same thing for the sleeves. Right, and I'll merge them actually, and now you remesh it. Okay, clip those edges because I don't actually need them. Okay, here as well, because your um, sort of clothing is sewn from, you know, like two pieces. So, well, a couple pieces, but from the back and the front, they're kind of uh, separated. So that's what I'm doing there. And here, just merging them. Okay, and yeah, that's pretty much it for the clothing. I do have a tutorial on how to create clothing as well, if you want to check that one out. So here, all I did was I took the clay build up and I went to alphas and the H tiles, I changed them up. Okay, I just... Uh, or is it the V tiles? Either the H tiles or the V tiles. And I just bumped them up and then it gave me this. Okay, so it's just a clay build up with a modified preset. Okay, modified alphas. Uh, the, the actual standard ZBrush alphas are very useful. You don't really need to use fancy alphas. You can just take them and modify them just a little bit. And yeah, they kind of do what you need. Unless you're dealing with like animal fur textures or whatever. But the ZBrush site, the Pixelogic site, actually has free alphas which you can download as well. So. Pretty useful library there. Okay, but here my, the whole idea was not to keep any details on the, uh, or to keep most of the details on the face. And all I'm doing here is just kind of adding some noise to the um, to the clothing, right? We don't need that much to the clothing because we want most of it on the face. And this is some test renders that I have here. Okay, just taking it into Blender, test rendering it, just to see what areas I can kind of deal with or mess with or lighting, right? Because you don't want to 
deal with all of that at once at the end. You just want to kind of partially, you know, work your way towards it. Okay, here, because, uh, you know, we didn't really drape this, right? We were, we were sculpting this, so we actually had to go in and, right, we sculpt these details here, right? Because it's not draped, like I said, we actually have to sculpt this. So here, I'm just taking in these details using the standard brush. And because it's wool, it's very thick, so these folds aren't going to be very sort of versatile, right? They're quite thick, and they don't show a lot of form underneath, okay? Our reference on the left there, he's probably quite muscular, but we can't tell because the uh, that wool shirt, okay, it's very, very thick. So it just hides a lot of form. Okay, we're kind of finalizing the cap here, right? Just getting in some details. Okay, using the damn standard just to kind of show that we have sewing lines there even though it isn't sewing lines right we're just uh pretending right our mesh is just one piece but here um you know flat cap is kind of sewn together so we have to uh, give the illusion of that so here just making some stitches and i also have a tutorial on how to make stitches on my channel you can check that out putting those in there and if you are 3d printing this the stitches as you can see it's kind of arching over and what I would do is make them solid. Because uh, this is pretty much 3D print ready, except for the stitches. Everything else is a solid. Okay, so just getting the stitches on these areas that uh, need them. And actually, now that I look at the flag cap, they don't actually have stitches. I haven't actually seen any, but I think they're stitched on the inside and then folded out. So you can't actually see them. But uh, we can do this. No one's really going to call us out on that. Okay, so there we go, and as you can see, I'm keep I am keeping myself organized, right? Just renaming things, making sure we know what's what and where they are. And I'm also having uh, using folders in ZBrush. Okay, there's a new folder option there that you can use, and that's pretty useful for keeping yourself organized and hiding materials. Okay, so you're just adding a little bit of noise. I'm using layers, by the way, as well. So layers, new layer, right there, just as I said it. Okay, and I'm just adding a little bit of noise. Okay, and the cool thing with layers. Again, you can check out my layers and morph brush uh, video, right? I explained all of that and why you should use them and why they're helpful. Okay, the layers will just help us to, let's say you kind of make them too deep or too shallow. You can take the layer and bump it up and it will kind of be double the strength or half the strength, whatever you choose to uh, make it, okay? So yeah, it looks a little bit messy. So what I'm doing is using custom alphas from the ZBrush site and just dragging them on. And this will add a little bit of organization to what we're doing here because it was a little bit messy with that um, with the first pass but i'm just using that in conjunction with the uh, with the alphas and that there will just give us a little bit of organization okay and now we're on to the neck again okay dealing with his errors and as you can see quite saggy but we can't really tell too much right because he's wearing a turtleneck so can't see too much there and also depends from person to person right not everyone has that type of uh sagginess okay so just be careful All right this guy is probably older than our model so just being careful not to copy too much from him okay back to our guy here and i'm just adding in some of the final details now just using a clay build up with some really low intensity here and just uh, kind of creating a you know a little bit more detail around him right because he's looking a little too plain like we saw on that first render and he is older so we can have just a little bit more detail on his face uh, you wouldn't want to do this with a younger person, right? They would definitely not like that. But with him, there's quite a lot going on there. And yeah, some pretty good detail there. So to do that, what I'm doing is using the clay buildup and just brushing up and down there. Sometimes you'll see me going perpendicular to an area or with the grain. Uh, in this case, I'm kind of going opposite. Okay, here getting in some of those areas of fat and again he doesn't have too much so don't go too crazy and also with this with this piece what i'm doing is I'm, i am actually adding volume by using the clay build up here so we also need to be careful of that okay and i didn't use a layer here we should have used a layer but that's okay because i was pretty final on my decision on doing this so and i do i did make a duplicate anyway so that's fine
Okay, again, kind of doing the same thing, right? Just going throughout the face here and doing all of that. Okay, pretty much the same thing again, right? <laughs> Just going throughout here. And as you can see, once you get to the details phase, it's pretty much the same, you know, repetitive stuff that you're doing over and over again. That's why I'm not going for crazy detail here, because if you can kind of get to this level of detail, you can definitely go, you know, more realistic than this. But at the end, it's just repetitive, right? There's no need to go too detailed, okay? Okay, so this time getting into the hair and we're just going to kind of finalize the details on the hair here. So again, pretty much the same technique, but because the hair grows out of the skin, we're going to kind of make sure to get that illusion here as well. Right, you're just using a smaller um, standard brush here or a clay brush for the clay buildup. Okay, and really getting in these finer details, right, just showing in these, showing these areas, right, make, have, making them look like they kind of pop out of the skin, which they do, but we just have to make that illusion here. Okay, you know, just having a look and thinking, you know, he looks pretty good with a moustache, right? And he looks good with all beard styles, by the way, so it just suits him. Right, some people look terrible with a moustache. <laughs> but he, um, you know, all the styles suit him, so. Okay, so again, going to the soul patch and, right, just getting in some of these individual areas here. And even though we're dealing with hair, you're not seeing me use thousands of strokes here, okay? I'm just dealing with one area and, you know popping out some areas to show that this is hair and that's it right I'm not going over the top with you know a million strokes uh, you know trying to show every bit of detail with this you can see yep that's hair and yes he has a beard yes he has a mustache and it reads that way right and if you look at it you're like well yeah wow that's you know pretty well sculpted and you can see it was sculpted you know not generated so kind of get credit for that not to say that it's any easier using generated hair you, you still have to know what you're doing right but I do still like the sculpted look here. And the hair is still separated, right? We're not merging into the face just yet. We will do that a little bit later on. But yeah, we're pretty much done with this. Again, just kind of doing the same thing here, but you know, using smaller strands and really getting in the details there. Right now, we're not really changing too much of the shape. Okay, and I still haven't done the rest of the hair right on his head because I'm still lazy to do that. It's quite a bit, but we will get to it in a second. Okay, but now moving on to the eyebrows so getting in the basic shape okay and if you're unsure how eyebrows work towards the middle they kind of um they kind of angle towards the inside and then as you go to the middle right they're angled outside and then as you get to the end they're angled down okay i'll just put a little diagram up for you guys to see what i'm talking about but that's kind of how your eyebrows are shaped but because he's older right he's got some wild hairs all over the place here but if you're looking at a younger person okay uh, teenager 20s 30s 40s even uh, you know they'll have some you know generally uh, normalized uh, eyebrows right they won't be as wild as this but they're still kind of conforming to that pattern right okay just having a look at some of the perspective there and what if that's under draw you can have a look at the camera angle there and usually I use like an, a camera angle of 120 which is pretty high because I think our our human eye focus shift is around 40 to 60 degrees or millimeters right uh, but i use 120 because 40 to 50 looks very fish-eyed in 3d so yeah just getting the hair in right using the same technique and i don't show the whole hair but you kind of get the point because i did the beard as well so that's it there and you'll notice i didn't really sculpt the perspective on right it was pretty much off the whole time so uh, it doesn't really matter right um i mean <laughs> it, it matters a little bit but as you can see it doesn't make too big of a difference right it's not like once i switch on perspective it looks bad or anything it looks the same just in perspective right but i would have switched on perspective a little bit earlier because you know just to adjust some of the angles there but that's okay as long as you stick with a higher uh, focus focal length you should be fine okay but here just detailing uh getting just like the final details i'm now doing 
using the clay build up a little bit of the damn standard just to get in some of the details on the nose here right because your nose can be quite detailed there and not really worried about the inside of the nose because that will be shadow uh, once we light it okay and the areas I kind of focused on most were the nose and the eyes okay and the areas around the eyes okay because people kind of look at that first right and then they kind of uh, wander around okay they don't really worry too much and that's also why I didn't really detail the cap and the the clothing too much because it's just wasted time really there's there's no need to put in that much detail speaking of the cap i am putting in some wear and tear here but that's about it i'm not going too crazy with the details and that's also why i used alphas for this because uh, you know to sculpt in that every piece for this would have been really crazy so for the sewing not really something i wanted to do there but once you look at the final render you'll see the face really captures the attention and then you know you look at the cap and you're like oh, okay that's pretty cool or the clothing Right, same thing with the clothing, I'm just going to add a little bit of wear and tear here, just to make it look kind of well worn. Okay, now I'm merging the hair to the face and I'm dynameshing it, we've got a total of 4 million points. And that's pretty good, so here I'm just smoothing out these areas, because when you merge an area uh, like very close to one another, and you dynamesh it, it kind of creates that artifacting there, which is what I'm just correcting. So same thing with these areas around the uh, hair and face here. I'm just making sure that they kind of looks the hair kind of looks like it's actually growing out of him and not just pasted on there. Okay, just a little bit of housekeeping that we have to attend to here. And the hair you'll notice on his head, I haven't actually merged it to his head. Okay, I wanted to keep it separated. Okay, and that's for the renders later on because um, it just helps us, right, just a little bit. But you can merge it if you want to, not too big of a deal there. Okay, but again, just getting in more details, pretty repetitive at this point, nothing new really in terms of techniques and style, right? And yeah, just getting in more of these hairs here. <laughs> I kind of went a little bit crazy with those hairs, but luckily he's not super well-groomed or anything. So, uh, you know, that uh, kind of suits the style there. Okay, here, just kind of merging these hairs as well. Right, really trying to get them in there and here we are right, right this is the finished product okay and on the final uh, tutorial or the page tutorial i do go through how to render this in blender how to set up the lighting how to set up the model and also how to prepare your model for blender right because uh, some of these models are about four million polygons eight million polygons that's quite a bit so i also go through that in the page tutorial so so yeah that is pretty much it for this one hope you guys liked it like it if you liked it dislike it if you didn't let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section and if you really like my work you can subscribe or check out the paid tutorial of this very video or my other paid tutorials down below thanks again guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed